Tombstone, Arizona Territory, June 6, 1882. The West spawned many different types of men, and one of the most dangerous was Whit Purcell. Well, you're going to be as flashy as an Eastern dude. A successful newspaper man should dress the part. Well, the hat's all right, but uh, Paris, this coat. What's wrong? Vulture just rode into town. Joking? That's about the mildest looking man I've ever seen. He's not even wearing a gun. Whit Purcell does his killing without one. He's what you might call a killer's agent. He makes his living by arranging for murders. What do you mean? Well, let's suppose a man has an enemy. Instead of handling it himself, he sends for Purcell. And then what? For a thousand dollars, Purcell agrees to handle it. And then he sends for his partner, Stu Regan. Regan locates his victim, baits him into a fight, and guns him down. And he and Purcell collect the money and move on. Mm -hmm. Nice business. Yeah, and they make a fine combination. Regan's short on brains, but he's fast with a gun. Purcell can't shoot for sour apples, but he thinks quick. And someone here in Tombstone must be marked for murder. Wonder who. And if he knows it. <laughs> Partner, set up another round of drinks for the game. <laughs> you uh, figure on being in town long, Mr. Purcell? Well, that, that all depends on how much time it takes me to finish my business. Here we go. Oh, afternoon, Sheriff. Would you care to join us in a friendly drink? I don't feel very friendly. Oh, now, that's no way to talk, Clay. Mr. Purcell's a visitor in our town. A very temporary visitor. Now finish your drink and get out. Well, Sheriff, what... You can drop the act, Purcell. I've seen you operate before in Dodge City. This is one town that you're not going to get away with murder. Well, I think that's out of line, Clay. When you start letting me run your bank, Eli, then I'll let you tell me how to handle my job. Well, Sheriff, the way you're acting, somebody might think I'm a dangerous character. Oh? What would you call a killer? Well, now, that's very strong talk. Why, I don't even carry a weapon. Un unless you count um, this. Let me give you some advice, Mr. Purcell. Get on your horse and get out now, while you still can. I'll get out, Mr. Hollister, when I finish my business. Not before. He's right, Clay. There are no keep-out signs posted at the city limits. You can't run a man out of town unless he's done something wrong. Yeah. Yeah, that does make it harder. The sheriff seems to have gotten out of the wrong side of the bed this morning. Let's drink to his recovery, huh? <laughs> I take it you couldn't scare Purcell out of town. Nope. I didn't figure it'd work, but it was worth a try. Well, what are you going to do now? I don't know. For the first time since I put on this badge, I feel kind of helpless. There ought to be some way. I, I can't do anything until they make a move. By that time, it'll probably be too late. If you only knew who they had in mind, you could at least warn him. Yeah, that's part of the battle. But i got to find out who hired him. You've got your problems. Hmm. And I've got mine. Getting out a newspaper. Just leave room for an obituary. In Tombstone, I always do. Oh, 
Uh, excuse me. My fault, Mr. Ramsey. You got a heavy load there. Haven't seen you in town lately. Been busy out the ranch. Any news? I can use the epitaph on your way. No. No, nothing going on. I'll let you know if anything happens. Thanks, I'd appreciate it. anything for the epitaph. Pardon me. Um, uh, you're Harris Clyburn of the epitaph, aren't you? That's right. Well, you're just the man who can help me out. I suppose you've heard about my run-in with the sheriff this morning. Oh, there's been some talk. Well, that's what I was afraid of. I I'd like to call on your good offices, if I may. Bartender, would you give me the... Oh, well, what's the matter with you, mister? You just spilled it. Well, I, I, I'll give him another drink, will you? I'm awfully sorry. I just don't understand people like you. What'd you do that for? I apologized. You know, for a little man, you got a mighty big mouth. From now on, keep it shut. Why, oh, you stupid lummox. You want trouble? I said put a halter on that lip. Leave him alone. You keep out of this. I don't like to see anybody pushed around. Looks to me like you're trying to make his business yours, mister. I'm not looking for any trouble. I'm not running from it, either. Oh, now, now, forget it, forget it, Mr. Clyburn. No, no reason for you to get mixed up in this. He started this. Maybe he'd like to finish it. I sure would. I'm not armed. Don't trouble yourself none about that, mister. I carry an extra. Now you have a gun. Use it. Well, go on. Move your hand a little closer to it. I'm not going to draw yet. Well, go ahead. I'm waiting. Paris! There's not going to be any shooting unless you want to take me on. That fellow started. I know how it started, Mr. Purcell. It's my gun. Well, you ought to be more careful what you do with it. What do you mean? You know, you've heard of cases where men were shot with their own guns? Oh, well, that wouldn't have happened. Maybe not. Thanks. Oh, you handled that very nicely, Sheriff. Let's get out of here. Oh, Mr. Clyburn, I'm sorry that we didn't get a chance to have our talk. Some other time. Well, I'll be looking forward to it. Remind me to stay out of saloons. You act like what I told you is a joke. Now, will you stay away from Purcell? Well, you act like it was my fault. I was standing there. He came up to talk to me. I figured I'd let him talk. Now, and a couple of seconds later, that skinny gunhawk showed up. Is that right? Yeah. It all started over practically nothing. Uh -uh. That's where you're wrong. That whole fight was planned out of the last detail. About two seconds more, and you'd have been nothing but an obituary notice in your own newspaper. That fellow you had the run-in with? That's Stu Regan. Stu Regan? Yeah. We know he's in town to kill somebody. But he almost accomplished his purpose. Me? Well, he's not going to waste time picking fights with strangers unless he's hired to. Me? Why? Well, 
Let's find out. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is assign Fred here to stick as close to you as possible. You really think I need him, Clay? Well, after what almost happened in the Oriental, yes. Remember, Harris, a thousand dollars is a lot of money. For a man like Regan, killing's an easy way to earn it. <sighs> Purcell really made me take the bait, didn't he? Yeah. But a little man with a smile on his face and murder in his heart. There ought to be some way to stop those two. I'm rather personally interested now. Until an actual attempt is made on your life, there's nothing I can do. Well, that's just dandy. At least you know it's you they're out to get. Most of Regan's victims don't even have that privilege. I don't feel so honored. Harris, can you think of anybody that might want to kill you? A newspaper editor makes lots of enemies. It looks like you made one real good one. Well, come on, bird dog. Where are you going? Back to the office. I've got a newspaper to get out. I guess I'll tag along with two of you. Clay, one bodyguard at a time's enough. Yeah? So, you know, it's a real nice jacket. Sure hate to see him get buried in it, wouldn't you, Fred? All right, let's go. Well, hello, Hollister. How's the fair city of Tombstone? Quiet, I hope. It has been lately. Now that you and Regan are in town, I'm looking for change. Oh, you've got Stew and me all wrong. Oh? You know, sooner or later, you're going to make a mistake. I'll wait. Well, good for you. Nice talking to you, Hollister. Well, I don't think there's any mail for you, but I'll... Uh, no, I, uh, I want some information. Glad to be of help. A couple of minutes ago, a little fat fella, always smiling, picked up a letter. I want to know who sent it and from where. Wish I could tell you, Clay. Look, Will, this could be important. It could help to save a man's life. You do know who sent it, don't you? Matter of fact, I do. It was mailed right here at the post office this morning. This is confidential, remember? After all, he put a stamp on it, makes it official mail. Will you trust me, Will? Martin Ramsey left it. It was addressed to a man named uh, Whit Purcell, the little fat man you spoke of. Uh, Ramsey told me he'd be by to pick it up. Oh, thanks, Will. Uh, <clears throat> confidential, remember? A postal clerk is sort of like a doctor about these things. Well, Doc, let's hope you just saved a life. There must be some mistake. The letter was sent by Ramsey and picked up by Purcell. The connection's obvious. I hardly know Ramsey. I haven't spoken to Ramsey three times in my life. Now, why would he want me killed? What do you know about him? Not too much. He bought the Salter Ranch. He's a quiet man, keeps to himself. Doing very well, uh, so I've heard. Well, think back. Maybe you can place him. Clay, like I said before, a newspaper editor makes a great many enemies. Yeah. Maybe somebody you exposed in the newspaper and sent to jail. A man he had a fight with. Sent to jail. Martin Connors, he was a lawyer. I helped send him to prison for embezzlement when I was working on a paper in St. Louis. It <sighs> couldn't be. Connors didn't look a thing like Ramsey. Well, how long ago was that? A little over ten years, I guess. Well, ten years in a prison term can change a man considerably. Well, that 
without his beard. Younger, maybe 20 pounds lighter. It's possible. Well, Martin Ramsey or Martin Connors doesn't make much difference. The important thing is we know who hired Regan and Purcell. Well, frankly, I don't feel much better off. I've still got a loaded gun at my head. Say, what are this to look on me? Well, this is a fine time to be talking about haberdashery. You know what they say, clothes make the man. Hey, that's pretty good. I think I'll order one from Chicago. Look, if it'll get your mind back to the problem, you can have a hat. You can have a coat, too, if it's any help. Well, thanks. I think I will. They are about the same size in the chest. The sleeves are a little short, though. How's it look? Like a newspaper editor who's about to be shot. Good. Let's hope that Regan thinks the same way. On our way, Clay. I don't want you taking my bullet. Harris, I don't want either one of us to take a bullet. But shooting's my job. Yours is writing obituaries, remember? Here's what I want you and Fred to do. <laughs> Stop worrying. Regan knows his business. <laughs> There's no substitute for experience. There he is now. I guess you owe us a thousand dollars, Mr. Ramsey. Evening, Mr. Ramsey. Happened to be in the neighborhood, so Fred and I thought we'd drop in on you for a while. Well, Mr. Purcell. This is a surprise. Nice seeing you again. And maybe we can finish up that talk we were going to have. Oh, a lot of things are going to be finished up before this night's over. It never occurred to me before, Mr. Ramsey, but uh, you look a great deal like a man I used to know in uh, St. Louis. A fellow by the name of Connors. Oh? I don't think I ever heard of him. I didn't think you had. Well, uh, gentlemen, if you'll excuse me, I have an appointment in town. Uh, sit down, Mr. Purcell. And you too, Ramsey. Sit down. We, uh... Have some more company coming. I think we should all be here to greet them.
the dark can be dangerous. Didn't anybody ever tell you that? Scared? You should be. Because we're finishing up what we started in the bar. I see your arm this time. Make your move. This time you have the privilege. Now earn your money. You didn't earn it. Alistair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks like you'll live a long time. She won't need this in prison. Come well, on, let's get that shoulder doctored up. You and I are going visiting. Conspiracy to commit murder. Well, it takes, it takes proof to convict a man, Sheriff. I don't think you have any. Oh? Well, some men just don't like to sit in prison alone. Regan did a lot of talking. Brad? All right, Ramsey, you too. You are Martin Connors, aren't you? Why did you want to have me killed? Well, I was afraid you'd recognize me. As far as I'm concerned, you'd paid for your crime. You went to prison. I had no reason to expose you. You mean you didn't know I'd escaped? We do now. Let's go. near Tombstone, Arizona Territory, September 16, 1889. Wally Joby and Chick Umber, professional killers. Hired by the Hammond faction of the Tanner Hammond Land and Cattle Feud, a bloody range war spreading throughout the territory. So far, 23 men had died. Every road outside Tombstone was a potential death trap. Hey, Joby. Look. That Fred Tanner's kid? Yeah. Well, what about that talk about the range war stopping and all us going free? Don't you fret none, Chick. We're still getting paid, and as far as we're concerned, the war's still on. Like a setting duck. Another 50 bucks. Not luck riding right into Tombstone. You know something about yourself, Chick? You're a warrior.
Sheriff Hollister? Yeah. From General Claybank. He said it was urgent. Thank you. To the amnesty. By authorization from Washington, the governor of the territory of Arizona orders all involved principals to immediately lay down their arms and take oaths to keep the peace. Anyone breaking the amnesty will be summarily court-martialed and executed. Otherwise, all participants are fully pardoned. Does that mean Joby and Umber? Why, they've killed seven men. That's what it means, Wayne. It's like the armistice at the end of any war. After a couple of years of fighting, the issues get confused, and there's right and wrong on both sides. So a full pardon is the only practical solution. We've got to end somewhere. Begging your pardon, sir, but I saw those two gunmen you mentioned, Joby and Umber, some out on the trail riding in, only a couple of miles out of town. Well, thank you very much, but uh, they're not wanted men anymore. Unless they break this amnesty, I can't touch them. Fred Tanner's in town buying supplies. I'll administer the oath to him. You ride out to Hammond's place and make sure that he understands all of the conditions, and then swear him in. That'll end it. Fred. Still chasing Hammond's hired gunman? Or have you quit trying? I wouldn't say that. Fifty dollars a man, Josh Hammond pays them. And you haven't even touched them. They're murderers, cold-blooded murderers. There was a lot of blood spilled on both sides, Fred. Besides, I need proof to arrest anybody. And I'm not looking for them anymore. Neither are you. The amnesty's come through. It's all over. I'd be glad. Except for that Joby and that Umber. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Come on over to my office. I'll give you the oath. Wayne's out getting Hammonds now. All right, Clay. You know, you know the real reason I'm glad it's finished? After three years of shooting and killing, it's not so much the land anymore, nor what this sort of thing has done to me. It's what it might do to my son. Les was 14 when it started. He's 17 now and figures he's big enough to help out with a gun. Or be killed by one. Special business for you. Well, this is one notice I'll be happy to print. Free. I'll take care of the rest. All right. Thanks. Well, we should do it. Because we should come about 15 lives sooner. Clay. 
You the newspaper man? That's right. I sure hope the rest of the people in this town know how to read. Ain't that right, Chick? Oh, we ain't about to break the amnesty. Only you don't say nothing about uh, self-defense. In case somebody else doing something. Well, uh, hello, Sheriff. Sure nice to meet you after all this time. Ain't hey, nice, Chick? Oh, sure is. Listen carefully, Joby. As far as I'm concerned, you and your partner are nothing but murderers, amnesty, or no. But I'm not going to run you out of town, because I want you here. I want you real close. And if you so much as wiggle a trigger finger, I'm going to haul you in. Sheriff, we ain't going to wiggle nothing. Unless somebody else wiggles first. See, in case you want us, we'll be over at the Oriental Saloon celebrating our new standing in the community. <laughs> They're going to make it a bit of pill to swallow, aren't they? Yeah, they're going to try. Hello, Ellen. Hi. Anything come in on those telegrams you sent out? Yes. No one seems to have anything definite on them. No, it's just a chance. I was hoping I could turn up something. Wally Joby, known member of the Wild Bunch, suspected bank robber, no proof or warrant, Provo, Utah. Wally Joby and Chick Umber questioned killings during Santa Fe Sheep and Cattle War last year. No proof. And, uh, and the same thing, Pecos, Texas. There's not a warrant in the bunch. They played it pretty smooth. I still can't touch them. Can't touch them? What are you talking about? Oh, forgot you hadn't heard. Here. Thanks, Ellen. even know who did it. Somebody ambushed him. Who do you think did it? I wanted you to know, Clay. I wanted you to know why I'm going to find Joby and Umber and kill him myself. Look, Fred, I've known you a long time. I know how you feel. But you can't break the amnesty. Otherwise, I'll have to arrest you. The court might hang you. You mean you'd stand for them against me? I mean, I've got to enforce the law no matter how I feel. Besides, you don't know that Joby and Umber did it. I'll ask him to make sure. Just before I kill him, I'll ask him. Hey, Mr. Tanner. Sure. Mr. Tanner, we sure are sorry about the kid. How did you know? Well, nobody told us about the amnesty, and when the boy come along with... We... No. No, Fred. be back. Next time, things will be different. I'll bring enough men to do it my way. Sheriff, we want to thank you. You know, we don't want nobody breaking that there amnesty. I don't do anything foolish. Sheriff, just got a little excited, that's all. We got nothing to worry about. Not with the law protecting us the way it does. Joby! Something for you to remember. There's one man the amnesty doesn't include. Uh, who? Me. The afternoon of September 16, 1889. A day Sheriff Clay Hollister stood alone to uphold the laws he was sworn to enforce. (laughs) 
There you are, bartender. That ought to cover it. And that ought to cover another bottle. Let it never be said that we're breaking the law. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I feel like a little poker, Chick. How about you? Sure. What about Tanner? He ain't gonna bother us none. You saw what the sheriff did. Next time he'll use his gun if he has to. Bring the bottle. You two gentlemen would like us to join you, wouldn't you? Yeah, wouldn't you? It's mighty obliging of you. Let's see here. 10, 20, 40, 50. Seems like all our money comes in $50 batches nowadays. 350, 400, 450, 500. Well, that's it, Clay. $500 reward to the man who kills Wally Joby and Chickumber, donated by the citizens of Tombstone. What do they want from me? They elected me to this office to uphold the law, and now they offer a reward to go out and break the law. Well, they feel pretty strongly about well, it. Well, you know how I feel about it. Yeah. So do they. That's why they gave me the money instead of you. Well, you can just give it back to them. An amnesty is a truce to stop wanton killings. A searing medicine to clean the gaping wounds of war. But which can leave little sores of infection to fester and spread. Toby. Oh, sure. sheriff. I want you a number out of town now. Well, 30 minutes ago you were telling us we had to stay. Well, I changed my mind. Well, you have. Well, we ain't. I said now. Try it. Now, Sheriff, we ain't gonna start anything. You want us to leave, we leave. I guess you're ace high. First town I ever saw where a single and ace beat two of a kind. How much time we got? I sure would like a drink first. 30 minutes. Clay? Harris said you probably were here. I... Outside. Well, there's trouble, Clay. At the post office, I overheard them. Most of the merchants, Maddox, Wilson, Richardson, they plan to join Fred Tanner when he comes back. What are you going to do? Well, there's not much I can do except get them out of town. Two killers going free to kill again. If there was only some way we could get them to break the amnesty. They're not about to. I've thought about it. How to force them or even trick them out into the open. I guess it would take something pretty extra special. Yeah. Yeah, they're hiding behind that amnesty and they're not... extra special. Extra special, that's it. Where's Harris? He's in his office, I think. Thanks. I... Uh, but... I haven't completed a conversation with you all day. Harris. I know how I can do it. I can force Joby and Umber out into the open, up from under the protection of the amnesty, but I need your help. Well, sure, Clay. What do you want me to change the epitaph? Is it all set up? Yeah. Well, can you change it? Change it? Yeah. Here's a headline for a front page story I need fast. Well, you don't think anything of ruining three hours' work, do you? It's for a very special extra edition of the paper. Just one copy, in fact. May I help? 
I am. Uh, I know who you are. If you're smart, you'll ride out of Tombstone. Uh, Fred Tanner's on his way here with his men. And Clay, the sheriff, won't be able to stop them. And Funny, you know, that's just what we were thinking. Since we here, they got a small army. Of course, if you were to ride with us, nobody would do any shooting, would they? So I figure we'll just wait here till Tanner gets here. And then you and me and Chick will just sort of mosey out of town. Just in case they slip through, two of you take the east road. We'll meet you at the edge of town. Don't forget, I want those two. All right, let's go. At the request of Sheriff Clay Hollister, I rolled out a special edition. Amnesties restricted to members of Tanner Hammond families only. All hired killers and gunmen to pay for their crimes. Fifteen minutes. Quick work. I'll just make sure they see it pronto. Yeah, I'll be waiting for you. Here you go. And Harris, be careful. Hey, Chick, let's load the saloon, just a couple of bottles. While we're waiting, we might as well get a little sociable. Seem like no time to be messing with drinking, Wally. You just quit thinking and get it. All right, all right. Humber. A sheriff's looking for you. Yeah, what for? You mean you haven't heard? What's well, right here? They can't do this. They can't do this. We got to get out of here. They changed the amnesty. Or it can't be this way. Something gone wrong. Hey, get back here, fool! Get away from that horse, Sheriff. I said, get away from that horse. Where's Joby? Telegraph office, I think. All right, Joby. Come on out. Now, don't ask for it. Now, don't come any closer, Sheriff, or I'll kill her. Get away with this. Why not? Nobody's going to shoot you. mile out of town. I'll make it. You think Tanner's gonna let you go? You go. 
call Tanner off or I'm going to kill her. You hurt her and I'll beat you to death. Joby. Whatever you have to do, I mean with me for breaking the amnesty. It's all right, Clay. I don't care now. When they shot at me, Fred, they lost their protection. In terms of the amnesty have been carried out. For those that broke it, they asked for it. Execution. I sort of hate to break up this front page. First time in my career I ever put out a one copy extra. You better save the paper. Someday it might be a collector's item. They were safe until they tried to shoot it out. You sure came up with an ace in the hole. What makes you say that? <laughs> I heard about it. Joby had it figured right at the Oriental. What do you mean? Wonder if he knew he was playing for such high stakes. When he said this was the only town he'd ever been in where a singleton ace beats two of a kind. Tombstone, Arizona Territory, September 12, 1881. There's something almost monotonous about a silver rush. Just about the time one wave of lucky prospectors begins to calm down, a new strike is made. And tombstone is bursting at the seams again with new plutocrats making the most of it and thugs and sharpies doing their best to separate them from their money. Nothing for Doc Cunningham to do here. Oh, just the coroner. It's getting too common to even make news for you anymore, isn't it? You still think it's one gang? I'm not so sure. About as being one gang, I mean. Whether it's one or a dozen, they always seem to know which miner has money in his belt, which stage it's worth holding up, how exactly I'm going to ship the bullion, and they know when I'm not going to be here. Clay! Clay Hollister! Jack! <laughs> Month the sun is out late eyes on you. Sure is. This is uh, Harris Clyburn, head of the epitaph. Who do Jack Oliver? <laughs> Lucky Jack Oliver. Don't want to mention figures, gents, but just twixt you and me in the lamppost. Forty thousand dollars in cold hard cash. Well, I hope you haven't got it on you. Not so as it'll fall out of my pockets. <laughs> I've been carrying it around in my money belt. But nobody knows I've struck it rich, so I'm changing my style, gents. Get the idea? I hope not. Don't it say diamonds? I'm keeping my money on me. Look, Jack, don't ask for it. This sheriff has made you suspicious. After supper tonight, gents, I'm asking all my friends to meet me at Sam's. Watch me pick out my diamonds. Your friends, huh? Well, I guess we better be there. Free champagne. Well, see you tonight. <laughs> Well, Lucky Jack, how do you like that one? Huh? Only $1,800. $1,800. $1, $1, well, they're all here. Let's keep them coming, Sam. Yeah. I'll take uh, that one. How much? $4,200. $4,200. And somebody fill up this mug of mine. Oh, that's a beauty. That's a beauty. Oh, that's a nice how do you like that one? $1,800. Eighteen hundred. Pay the man. Hey, Jack. Here's the cream and the bearcat of the lot. 
Yeah. Just got it out of the safe. And only $10,000. $10,000? Ten thousand dollars. You must think I'm drunk. That's black. You gents ever hear of a black diamond? No. 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 Lady, is this real? That's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. She must know, huh? Yeah. Huh? Well. Uh, wait a minute, missus. Too bad she wouldn't stay for a little drink of champagne. Well, if the lady says so. <laughs> hey, the man. She must yeah. right, yeah. Now, everybody to the Tivoli Saloon. Yeah, yeah let's go. Yeah. Well, well, now, that is, if I can get down out of here without Come on. Come on. Come on. Right. You better leave these in Sam's safe. A man can spend 20000 in one night, and Clay Hollister thinks he ain't got sense enough to take care of his own diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Oh, let's go. <laughs> well, they say there's a providence that looks out for fools and drunks. Yeah. Well, just in case Providence is sitting down on the job, I'll have my deputies watch him, too. Lucky Jack Oliver, fourth stab victim in week. Well, I guess I need some new deputies. Well, lucky Jack, huh? Looks like striking a rich was the unluckiest thing that ever happened to him. A knife again. Lots of knives in Tombstone. Yeah. See you later, Clay. I'd like to take a look at your figures for me. Oh, if you will, please. I've grown to depend on you. Oh, here it is. A small mistake in addition. <laughs> well, I try. And thank you for advising me about the Tough Nut Mine shares. An excellent investment. I'm sure it's unnecessary to say that the information about their bullion production is quite confidential. Oh, Mr. Starr, of course. It's just that there's so many things going on around here. I know. I read about that poor Oliver man being stabbed and robbed of his diamonds. I wish I knew who took them. Well, I wish I could tell you. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have them with you? Bring them to my home. to her home, Mrs. Curtis was followed by one of Tombstone's undesirables, who in turn was followed by Sheriff Clay Hollister. Sure. This is a real good haul. Going into business for yourself, Eric? Where's the black diamond? I was looking at it. I just forgot to put it back. I always figured you were holding out. 
Now get out of here before I kill you. Look, Mrs. Curtis. When it comes to killing, you're talking to a man who knows how. Don't do it, Eric. You just had me kill now. So I have to kill you. You can have him. You can have anything. Break your arm. I thought he'd kill you. Tell me what happened, Mrs. Curtis. My husband gave me the gun before he died. I never thought I'd use it. Go on, tell me what happened. Well, he picked up my purse for me in town. And then he must have followed me out here. He broke in and... And then he tried to... Oh, Clay! Clay, I killed a man. I killed him. How could it happen? All right. I'll, uh, I'll get him to the undertaker. I'll be back later. Thank you, Clay. This keeps up. We'll have more people in Boot Hill than we got in town. Uh -huh. 18 blue white diamonds, horseshoe setting. Well, according to Sam's list, that black diamond pendant is the only one still missing. Erickson could have dropped it when he murdered Oliver. Or he could have hit it somewhere. Yep. Must have been a frightening experience for Mrs. Curtis. Yeah, but I'm still wondering. Wondering? About those diamonds, about that gentlewomanly little derringer, and about why it was used. Mrs. Curtis? <laughs> Lucky Oliver was right. This sheriffing has made you suspicious. Could be. Well, what are you going to do? Get to know a gentlewoman a little bit better? You know, I sure miss Erickson. But there's some satisfaction splitting three ways instead of four. <laughs> I still don't like one of an outfit killing another. Makes me uneasy. There's another thing I don't like. <laughs> Look, Clay Hollis to hang you around me is the best thing that's happened since Mr. Starr took a fatherly interest. When we take the tough nut mine Starr told you about, there's going to be a lot of silver bullion wanting to be moved. And I'll take my usual shopping trip to Tucson. Now, you boys better go, huh? Come in. Thank you. Oh, you look beautiful, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you. You feel like answering a few questions now? I guess so. Well, as I said, I just returned home from Tombstone and... No, no, I mean about the diamonds. Do you have to have all the details? Some people have been killed because of those diamonds. Well, Clay, he... he offered me some of them. And then he attacked me with the knife. 
I'm glad you told me. Well, so am I. Because I couldn't keep anything from you now. I never want to. Clay. The morning of September 15, 1881. The environs of Tombstone were rocked by an explosion at the office of the Tough Nut Mine. The loss was both human and monetary. Just how many people knew that the bullion was stored here for shipment? Some of our regular investors. All of them men? No, the principal of our local school, the widow of Reverend Caleb Smith, are among the ladies. Well, could I see the list, please? I'll have to go back to the bank. But they're all solid, respectable people. I'll vouch for them. Here's a list of our investors, and I still vouch for them. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I guess we better have another talk with Sarah. Sarah, uh, Mrs. Curtis, is on her way to Tucson. She goes there to buy her clothes. When did she leave? Told me she was leaving early this morning. Be gone two days. From what I've been hearing around here, I thought you'd be the first one to know. Well, her name's here, all right. And then so is the school principal and the widow of Reverend Smith and just about every other respectable person in Tombstone. Yeah, tell me, Clay, uh, how are you going to arrest him? Wholesale or one at a time? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, very funny. But your suspicious sheriff would still like to know why she shot Erickson before he could be interrogated. Any suggestions? September 17, 1881. Mrs. Curtis was due back from Tucson, and a troubled Clay Hollister rode out to welcome her and to again study the mysterious gentlewoman. doing out here. Yeah, I just wanted to see that you got back all right. Oh, well, come on in the house. Uh, you sure look wonderful. Well, thank you. Well, come on in. Uh, no, I better not. I've got to get back to Tombstone. Strange things seem to happen when I'm out there. Personally, I think you're jumping to conclusions. Clay, you told me yourself, she has imitation jewelry by the handful. A rare black diamond, just exactly like the one Lucky got killed for? Maybe. And until you know for sure, at least give her the benefit of the doubt. Well, I want to make sure. The Tough Nut's got another shipment of bullion about ready to go out. What are you doing? Writing you a headline. I'll give you the details later. You sure you want me to print this? Print it. All right. I'll print it. September 18. I had planted Clay's story, and the epitaph had avid readers. It's true. Production's been beyond our expectations. We're going to get back some of that money those scoundrels caused us both to lose. But I can't understand the editor printing this story. Every detail is here. And the sheriff made a particular point on keeping this shipment secret. Clay Hollister? Mm hmm. Well, thank you for relieving my mind about the loss from the holdup. Oh, anytime, you know. Thank you. The night of September 18th. Clay, what's troubling you? Oh, nothing. Oh, Clay, dear. Oh, I just don't like to upset you. All right, I'll tell you. Did you see that article in the epitaph about the shipment from the Tough Nut Mine? Well, I planted it. You planted it? You mean there isn't any shipment of bullion? Oh, there's going to be a shipment, all right, and a very rich one. But it isn't going out on the stage with my deputies. I don't understand. They're taking out a fake load. Anybody who holds up that stage will get empty boxes for his pains. 
I'm taking the real bullion on the back roads, plain wagon, all by myself. The morning of September 19, a reception was being planned for the deputies and Sheriff Hollister. No, I tell you the deputies will be guarding the real shipment on the stage. Why would he lie to you? Because he knows. How? You'll have to kill him. Hollister? Not me. I still got some living to do. Ned and me will take care of the deputies. As for Hollister, he's your lookout. All right, I'll look out for him. I have to. The tin will set the dynamite off, all right. All we got to do is wait for him to get to us now. Come on. It was the last likely spot for an ambush. Sheriff Clay Hollister hoped he owed Mrs. Curtis an apology. Hello. I guess you'll live. I'm not so sure I want to. I don't like jails. Clay, I didn't believe you about the bullion. The boys are at Mule Mountain, waiting to ambush the stage. Dynamite. Well, thanks for telling me. <laughs> I wish I'd told you a lot more sooner. Send a doctor back for you. Clay, I'm glad I missed. Find the right pieces. 
First, you better pick off any deputies the dynamite don't get. I dropped a pistol. Thank you. There must be thousands of dollars worth of stuff down there, besides these. Plus what they'll recover from her Tucson go-between. They've already arrested him. Yuma Prison. She was such a gentlewoman, I can hardly believe it. It wasn't easy. For me either. I'd have given a lot not to believe it. Maybe even one of these? June 23, 1884. A train was passing close to Tombstone, Arizona Territory, carrying a party of roistering political conventioneers headed for Chicago. But two of the men on the train were not going to Chicago. You boys don't look happy. Why ain't you happy going to Chicago to nominate that great American Grover Cleveland? <laughs> Say, you ain't blame men, are you? Why, we'd throw blame men right off of this train. Now, look here. I don't want any trouble. I'm Bledsoe, Deputy Marshal from San Antonio. And this here's Sam Carver. Murdered an express agent in the holdup. Then broke jail by killing an unarmed guard. I ran him down in Prescott. And now we're heading back. And neither of us is in the mood for any hijinks. Well, maybe you don't feel like hijinks, Marshal. But the condemned man looks like he needs a little cheering up. How about a drink, Carver? He's not drinking. What's the harm in the poor devil having a bracer? Huh, boys? All right. If I let him have one drink, will you boys leave us alone? Quite sure, Marshal. Just one little drink. And so it's the Grove of Cleveland. I Dead in your tracks. This man that moves, I'll kill him. Morning, Clay. Uh, bringing your diary up to date? No, accounts, book work, reports. People have the idea that being a sheriff is one tenth chasing after criminals and nine tenths sleeping in the sun. Ah, don't get yourself all riled up so early in the morning. It's bad for your liver. And I hear you've got somebody to chase. Yeah, Sam Carver. He was being taken in for murder when he jumped a train last night north of here. Sam Carver? Wasn't he mixed up in that cattle rustling and butchering ring here about three years ago? That's right. I couldn't prove anything definite on him, but feeling was running so high in town that I had to move him out of Tombstone for his own protection. 
Say, I'm going to go out and talk to his sister, Amy Hendricks. She and uh, Roy are mighty good people, Clay. Hard workers, devoted to that youngster of theirs. And it's a wonder what they've done to the old Walker place since they took it over now. Now, why ride out there and get Amy all upset about her brother? She'll get the news soon enough. We'll see. What do you mean? Well, Carver's on foot without money and supplies. He just might head for the place where he's sure getting help. If he suddenly showed up there, Roy and Amy might get involved. I want to make sure they don't. Roy and Amy Hendricks aren't the kind of aid and a better murderer, even if he is a relative. Well, maybe not, but the report said Carver was armed. He may not have a choice. <laughs> It's a fat, sassy coon you got there. His name's Bandit. See the mask over his eyes? Yeah. So your folks home? Well, Pop ain't, but my mom is. Bruce, it's almost lunchtime. Well, hello, Clay. What brings you out to see us? Well, I, uh... You better go wash up, Bruce. Yeah, sure. See you later, Mr. Hollister. Yes, Clay. The boy tells me your husband isn't home, Mrs. Hendricks. I'm sorry. I wanted to talk to both of you. When was the last time you heard from Sam? About eight months ago, he wrote us from San Antonio. He needed money. He's not in trouble, is he? I'm afraid so. What happened? He killed two men, badly injured another one. Oh, no, there must be some mistake. Well, Sam's always been rough and wild. And he's been weak, but... Well, Sam wouldn't kill. I'm sorry, ma'am. There is no mistake. You haven't changed a bit, have you, Clay? You always were ready to condemn him without proof. Why did you come out here, Sheriff, just to gloat? No, ma'am. I came out here to prepare you and to warn you. Of what? Well, there's a chance that Sam may come to you for help. If you give it to him, it's a criminal offense and subject to prosecution. Sam wouldn't come near us or Tombstone. I hope not, because if he does, I expect you to let me know. You expect? You expect, even if he were to come here, what right have you to expect me to betray him? My right as the representative of the people that gave me this badge? Your neighbors, friends. Would you betray them? Go away, please. At times, I'm not overly fond of my job. This happens to be one of them. I suppose you were just doing your duty. I'm, I'm sorry. All I'm asking is for you and Roy to be careful. You will have it then that blood's thicker than water, won't you? Isn't it? Majesty of the law seems a little crestfallen. Harris, there ought to be a special course in how to deal with women. Kitten have claws? Oh, no, no, not that, but I did get her upset. Maybe you're right. Maybe it is all for nothing. Now, one thing I've learned in a checkered career, Clay, the view's terrible looking backward. If you made a botch of things, forget it. Thanks. And as for women, you could study them for the rest of your life and wind up an ignoramus on the subject. As Alexander Pope said, woman's at best, a contradiction still. Mr. Clyburn, you're a great comfort to me. Not me. Alexander Pope.
Let me be quiet. Oh, Sam, I can hardly believe it's you. Oh, when the sheriff said... Sheriff? Sheriff said what? When? Well, yesterday. They're looking for you, Sam. They say you killed two men. Amy, it wasn't like that. You gotta believe me. I killed the first man in self-defense. I was innocent, but they were gonna hang me anyway. And the second man? I tried to get away. The guard tried to gun me down like a dog. It was either him or me. Oh, Sam, I knew you couldn't kill anybody. We haven't got any time for any tears. I'm hurt, Amy. I need help bad. Oh, your leg. What have you done to it? The iron cut it when I jumped off the train. I hobbled for miles. The leg swole up. Then an old Mexican in a wagon picked me up. He saw the irons, but he didn't care none. Not when I gave him my watch. How long have you been up here? Why didn't you call me sooner? I came in last night. I didn't dare rouse anybody. I don't know who's all living here on the place with you and Roy. Maybe a hired hand or two, nervous with a shotgun. Where is Roy? He's away, but he'll be back soon, maybe even tonight. There's nobody here but Bruce and me. Just as well. I was figuring on trouble with Roy anyway. He's always been too righteous for me. Sam, you know you and Roy never got along, but he wouldn't deny you help, not with your hurt like this. He loves me. Why, he'd do it even if just for my sake. I can't wait for Roy. I've got to get these irons off. Have you got a, a fence wire cutter on the place? No, I don't think so. Our land's not fenced. Then you'll have to go to Tombstone and buy one. The heaviest one you can get. All I want for now is to sever through this chain so I can straddle a horse. Well, what are you waiting for? With any luck at all, I can be clear into Mexico by tonight. All right, Sam. I better take Bruce with me, though. We don't want him to learn you're up here. Young boys sometimes can't keep secrets. Do as you like. Bring me some grub before you go. All right. And Amy. Yes? Watch your tongue. Well, oh, yes, Sam. Well, now here's the muslin and the thread. There's the beans and the bacon. Now, was there anything else, Miss Hendricks? No, I think that'll be all. Huh? Oh, uh, Roy asked me to get him a pair of wire fence cutters, the heavy kind. Oh, you're building a fence, huh? I've just got the ticket for Roy. Hello, Bruce. Hello, Mr. Editor. Well, good morning, Amy. Good morning. How's Mr. Roy? Oh, he's fine, thank you. Well, now, these should get the job done. Well, good morning, Miss Editor, and what can I do for you? There's no hurry, Esau. You go right ahead. Something sort of personal. Oh, I'll be with you in the jiffy. Now, that'll be five dollars and a half. Put the bacon right in there, and the beans here. I'll keep these here so they'll be out of the, the dust. There you are. Thank you very much. Now, I'd better let Bruce carry the cutter because they're the kind of heavy. Here you are. Goodbye, Mr. Clavin. Goodbye, Miss Hendricks. Goodbye, Sam. Goodbye. Say hello to Roy for me. Hello. And now, what was that personal matter of yours? Clay Hollister. <laughs> We're just fresh out of Clay Hollister's. <laughs> what I came to see you about, he saw I didn't want to mention him in front of the lady. Need some new suspenders. They lost their snap. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess. If you were as old as they are, you'd have lost your snap, too. <laughs> you know what? I just got these in. And they're highly recommended to keep everything taut and tidy. Well, you should do the trick. Yes. You know, I got them in special for you. Because we can't have our editor losing these trousers, can we? <laughs> I tell you... The night of June 25, Roy Hendricks came home to his anxious and worried wife. Roy, please come into the house before you go to the barn. Hey, 
Amy, what's wrong? It's way after midnight. Is Bruce... I no, mean, there's no, nothing... darling, he's all right. Sam's here. He's in the loft. He's hurt and he's sick and the law's after him. Amy. Roy, please. They say he killed two men, but he told me how it happened. He couldn't help himself. Oh, Roy, I've been so frightened without you here. Amy, you've got to realize and understand what this means. If Sam's in trouble with the law, innocent or not, we don't dare get mixed up in it. But he's so sick. And they had chains on his legs. I went into town to get a cutter to get him off, but by the time I got back, he was burning up with fever. He was too sick to get away like he wanted to. All right. But sick or not, we've got to find some way to get him out of here. Roy, don't antagonize him. He has a gun. Let's see that lake. Looks like blood poisoning to me. Reckon we better get you a doctor and fast or you're a dead man. I'm not Doc Cunningham in Tombstone. He knows me. He turned me into Hollister. But for Amy, I'd turn you in myself. She thinks this wasn't any fault of yours. It wasn't. Might have known the help I'd get out of you, Hendrix. Suit you to see me dead. Suit me more if you were a long ways away from here. Roy? I got the chain cut. And I'd been gone before now. But the sickness come over. I'm as weak as a kitten. Uh, there's a halfway kind of doctor living over at Pima Tanks. Drunk most of the time. Does his doctrine on cattle and horses when he's middling sober. But I guess he's better than nobody. What makes you think he won't blab? Money. He's done his share of patching up the law's bullets. I'll pay it, Sam just so I can get shut of you as fast as I can. How long to get him? I'm bone tired. Got to get a little sleep. I'll leave at daybreak with the buckboard and be back here around noon, maybe. Remember, I'm doing this for Amy. If I had my way, I'd run you off as you are or turn you over to the sheriff. Thanks. I'll remember. <laughs> telegraph office and this just came through for you. Oh, thank you. It's a follow-up on the Carver case. Bled so the deputy marshal had a concussion, but he'll be all right. Oh, well, now I don't have to open it. What do you mean? Oh, you told me what it said. Well, naturally glanced at it as I brought it over. My newspaper instinct. Naturally. Hey, this description of Carver is interesting. Description? You know what he looks like. Yeah, but I didn't know he was wearing leg irons when he jumped off the train. Leg irons? Mm -hmm. Yeah. First information said he freed himself. Harris, if Carver's weighted down with irons, he's got to be close around here somewhere. And he's got to have help to get rid of him. Well, what's the matter? Clay, it might just be. Now, confound it, it's got to be. What has to be? Amy Hendricks was in Stellings yesterday buying fence cutters, big ones. Now that I think of it, the Hendricks place is unfenced range. The deputy's due back here in a couple of minutes. Tell him where I've gone, have him stand by around the office. Now there wasn't much doubt in Sheriff Clay Hollister's mind, or mine either. Sam Carver had to be at the Hendricks ranch. Carver was a tough enough proposition in himself. But there were to be added complications. Not wanting Bruce to know about his uncle, Amy had kept Carver's hideout a secret. Come on, bandit. You gotta learn how to walk with a leash. Then I can take you into town with me. Come on, bandit. Don't you ever want to learn nothing? Come on! Bandit! Bandit, come on! 
Bandit? Bandit, where are you? Bandit, don't you think you can get away? Bandit? Mom! Mom! Shut up, it's your uncle. Mom! Please, uh, let me go. Mom! Mom! Please help me, Mom! Sheriff! Mom! Please, Mom! Sheriff, he's got bruise. You stay back. He'd kill your sister or not. My brother's sick. He's half out of his head. I've got to get Bruce. Stay here. Let me take care of him. Hello, Sam. Let's you and I talk this over. No use to talk, Sheriff. You know I'm holding all the cards. Make your fight a man's fight. Let the boy go. You want him to stay healthy? Take off your gun belt. All right, Sam. Just don't hurt that boy. That's more like it. Now, no tricks, mine. But the boy gets it. Amy, come in here. Sam, he's your own nephew. It's no good. He's already killed two men in cold blood. You think he's gonna start acting like a fond uncle now? Shut up. Amy, fix me some grub in a sack and a canteen of water. Me and Bruce are taking Hollister's horse. Go on. ride very far. If that leg doesn't get you, I will. Not with this little insurance policy on the saddle in front of me. If the law comes within gun range of me, the brat dies. Now go on outside. Son? Sure, Pop. Bullet went clean through. Nothing busted. How about the other ones? You won't have to do anything for him. Let's get him inside. I'm sorry, Clay. It was my fault. I believed him. It is thicker, isn't it? but it spills just as easy. June 27, 1884. Buy us some breakfast? Oh, no, thanks. There's a story. You want to read it? Help write it. Just help me forget about it. You know, you've got one unhandy quality in a lawman, Clay. Sensitivity. Every time you're forced to kill a man, you're in the dumps for days. You know what you saw was right. These are good. 
good sheriff, good suspenders. Gives a citizen a nice, secure feeling. 